This is about spiritual truth. And that's what I'm going to preach on. Pulling away this veil of the worldly lives is permeating everything. Uh, it's what this whole series is going to be about. Um, I'd like everybody to go ahead and uh, turn with me to Isaiah 66. I want you to mark that. Okay. Isaiah 66. Yep. Just go ahead and mark that. When you get it. And then we're going to go to 1 Kings to do our initial reading. 1 Kings 11. But. There was a uh, show out. Jack Nicholson sitting up and he's sitting on the defendant stand and Tom Cruise is looking at him and he says, I want the truth. Yeah, that's a few good men. I want the truth. Nicholson says, you want the truth? He says, I think I deserve the truth. And he says, you can't handle the truth. And that is true. There are so many people who just can't handle the truth. We're going to talk about abortion tonight. Abortion? Abortion. Because I'm going to pull aside the veil. <laughs> And we're going to discuss what is really going on. Because what people think is going on is the lie of this world and the deception. But there is a truth, a spiritual truth behind it. 1 Kings 11, this is no new thing. Verse 7. Then did Solomon build a high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Moloch, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And he's not only called Chemosh and Molech, he's also called Malcolm, Milcom, Baal Hermon, Kronos, and Rome, and Saturn. Same demon, same entity. Some built this in the valley of Hinnom. Now let me describe to you the statue. The statue was a, <clears throat> that of the body of a man, but it had the head of a bull. Of a what? Of a bull. It had doors in its chest. And in its fire, they stoked the fire. The whole thing was made of brass. And it had its hands extended so. Now, there were two things they could do. As it had its open mouth and there was a fire there. They could pass the child through the fire. And burn it. A lot of times it would die from that. Sometimes it wouldn't. But it would be scarred if it did, if it survived. And the scarring would make it offered under the demon. Sort of like how people try to dedicate children to Christ. This is dedicating them to that demon. The other thing they would do is they would put the child in the hands. Now, in the hands, it would boil to death. But they also had a lever that after it died, they'd pull and the hands would go up and throw the, throw the baby into the mouth where it would sink down into the fire and turn to ash. So it would symbolize it eating it. Now, Moloch 
which means king. He was king of the gods. He uh, let that sink in for a second. That here we have Solomon building an idol called the king of gods, Molech, <laughs> out in the valley right outside Jerusalem for them to worship at. He was the god of fertility, the god of blessing. He helped the crops. He made you fertile. He gave you money. And they would dance and they would have their orgies outside of this idol. <laughs> but there was a problem. The problem is why the children were being passed through the fire and while they're burning to death in the hands. That affected the orgies. It's hard to listen to your child scream no matter how cold and blood-hearted you are and perform your perversions. To act in rebellion to God while your child is dying. It's hard to do. So what they would do, what they did was they put two drums. Tophet. Tom, and was the names of them. And they would take them out, and he would beat them. And they had a priest on each one, big drums. And they would just beat them constantly, day in and day out. And they would rip cycle through the priests, but they kept the drums going. So that it drowned out the, the sounds of the children. You know the worship of Moloch is not dead. Your leaders, leaders of the world, they gather in the Red Forest here in America. They have an idol of an owl. They sacrifice, fake sacrifice supposedly, to them. And the name of that owl is Moloch. Because it's the same demon it's the same spirit that has been propagated over America and the world. Why do people have abortions? I can't have one right now. I'm sorry. I can't have a child. I'm not ready to have one. I want freedom of sexual sexualness, sexuality. I have I want to be able to do what I want to do. I can't afford one right now. I need blessings financially before I ever can take on that kind of responsibility. Are you hearing me? It's the same reasons. And they start killing the children <coughs> to the same spirit, to the same idol. And they take and they had a little issue for a while where the children were being born to swing abortions, screaming and crying as they boiled to death. And that affected the way people performed their sex lives. It affected the way that people seen themselves. <coughs> it interrupted their sin and their perversions before God. As we stand up and listen to the women's march, and the women coming, I'm a dirty, dirty girl. That was supposedly in response to Trump. Yeah, I know. 
The thing is, is they were all about the right to kill the children. All about. And make no illusions, they do not believe that it's a fetus. They know what it is. Every soul knows what it is. The same people that would say it's not a child one minute will be the same ones that when they are pregnant and are hit in a car, hit by a car or something, and the child dies, will want them pursued for the life of that child. Don't ask yourself or confuse yourself. They know. Everyone does. But it was they were being boiled by the Selene, just like the hands. But the sound of the baby's cries, the sound of the innocent blood. And God is a father to the fathers, God is a protector and a revenger of innocent blood. Couldn't take the cries. So they started doing it inside the womb where the baby could scream, but with no air, no one could hear. They have gone so far as to pull it out by the feet, stab it through the back of the skull into the brain till it stops twitching, and suck its brains out and crush the skull pull before they pull it the rest of the way out. So it can't scream. People have put videos out showing what the baby's trying to do as it's trying to scream, as it's trying to get away from the instruments that are pulling it apart inside the womb. Jeremiah chapter 3. It says, I have found the blood of the poor innocents upon your skirts. You have not even suffered them to come out. That's not a direct quote. That's actually uh, not King James. It is a quote. It's not King James. Jeremiah 3. Jeremiah 3. Yeah. Enjoy the quote. We'll just go into it there. I don't like I don't like to halfway quit things anyway. I'm sorry, it was Jeremiah two, chapter or verse thirty four. Also in thy skirts is found the blood of the souls of the poor innocents. Jeremiah 2. 2 Verse 34. I have not found it by secret search, but upon all these. This is nothing new. And it started in the valley of Hinnom. Does anybody know where the Valley of Hinnom is? The Valley of Hinnom sits, it's a valley that runs right on the other side of the Valley of Midigo. They are separated from by a mountain called the Mount of Olives. When Jesus returns, he puts his foot upon the Mount of Olives and it splits down the center. And the two valleys become one so that the blood can flow from the horse's bridle all the way 
out to the sea. This is what we call the Battle of Armageddon. It takes place here. Go ahead and turn with me to Isaiah 66. 16 and 18. We'll start with 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with the flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh in the abomination and the mouse, shall be consumed together with, shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. For I know their works and their thoughts, and it shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. Okay. Purify themselves in the garden behind one tree. This is a direct response to Milcom, Chemosh, Molech. They eat swine's flesh and mouth. But they take these pieces, these incense, and various other offerings, and they put them in the chests to this idol. And they sanctify themselves here. God is the avenger of innocent blood. In 1976, one third of all the children born in the United States were killed by the infanticide we call abortion. Every year, it's either grown or it's waning, but it's remained right about there on an average. So if we all stood up here, there'd be one of us missing for every three. <laughs> one of us would be taken out of our lives. Every third person would be gone. And that's the impact that abortion has had on our lives. The world is coming to judgment. This isn't about choice. The choice is made when you do the act of sex outside of marriage. That's your choice. choice you make when you do abortion is you're choosing to murder. In Jeremiah, he says, he continues, he says, I will plead with you because you say that I'm innocent, that you're innocent. There is no innocence in this. You think you have a right, but your right is you're offering your child up to the spirit of a demon that is overshadowing the entire United States. The parallels aren't just close. The parallels are the same. There's a truth in the world of the spirit. We don't see it, and a lot of people don't understand it. But you have spiritual dominion that rules over places and over people. You'll see it passed down from family member to family member to family member to family member. Even when they aren't even associated with one another because the spirit is being passed down. 
that has dominion over the family and it needs to be broken off. You can have alcoholism passed down when the two, the son is even removed from the family before it even starts. And it'll hover over it and destroy the life and destroy the life that follows it and the life that follows it until the chain is broken because it's the spirit, spiritual dominion. The world calls it choice. But the truth is, you're being lied to. They are worshiping the same idol. Your leaders gather yearly to worship this same idol that was in the Valley of Hinnom. God is not going to hold them guiltless. God will avenge the innocent blood. He makes man as scarce as gold from Ophir. Because it's life for life. Tooth for tooth, eye for eye. Blinders are off. You can't sit there, can't listen to it. You can't not see. The spirit that had dominion that's over Solomon that he laid is the same spirit that has dominion over the United States that has taken dominion over the world and the children have just been offered to it continually. What are you going to do? It's an uncomfortable truth. It's an uncomfortable fact that churches still seek to combat this through the courts. Through legislating righteousness or trying to. Instead of getting down on your knees and getting a hold of the problem. It's an uncomfortable truth. We have many that sit in our pews that want to justify themselves instead of being justified by God. Who can look at the blood of an innocent child and say, it's my choice. My choice. It's not like a child can fight back. <clears throat> it's not even like you're giving it the option to cry, to stay in your hand. Just doing it in. He's willing. But you can't be justified by yourself. You have to recognize your own sin. Your own wrong. Your own evil. And cry out. Forgive me, oh my God. You can have forgiveness. But there'll be no peace without it. I know this is rough for a lot of people to handle. But we're talking about truth. Can you handle the truth? Because we're going to pull back some of the veils. 
as we go on in this series. This one is probably one of the most important. There's a third of every life that comes in. Same sermon and given an offer to a demon. And we can't remain silent. I think they talk about the coldness of people's hearts. And they'll stand up there and say, we have the right to kill babies. Are you so blind? Are you so bereft of the truth? Have you no heart or soul? God asks you to return to him. But he's not going to do it forever. He's not going to do it for long. Soon he will gather all nations before Jerusalem. And he will pay to the idol the blood of everybody that followed him. Life for life. Eye for eye. Tooth for tooth. Until he has vanquished this evil from the face of the earth. Once and for all. And if all mankind dies before it, so be it. He started with just one before he can do it again. Think about it. Pray about it. Just don't joke. <laughs>